Okay, good morning, everyone. It's a tremendous honor for me to welcome you all to our Bracing for Impact conference on the future of AI for society here at Osgoode Hall Law School. Now, we're delighted to have you join here. For those of you uh, joining from our live stream on our YouTube channel, and those of you here in person, finally here in the room, thank you so much for joining. I had a peek also at the attendance list uh, on, in our virtual online environment, and there's people from all over the world. So thrilled uh, for that, and we look forward to your comments throughout the day. And we really want it to be a fun and engaging and rich learning experience for you all. Now, I'm Professor Pina D'Agostino, and I'm the founder and director of IP Osgood, and uh, one of the founding co-organizers for today, along with Professor Ian Stedman, hi Ian, and Dr. Aviv Gaon, who just flew in uh, last night from Israel. So uh, thank you. Uh, you know, it's uh, always funner when we work as a team, and uh, you know, we've been at this for some time. Uh, leading the charge on the AI uh, discussions even before it was popular to do so. And uh, we're also, of course, grateful to Microsoft. So Microsoft is one of our founding sponsors, and they've been uh, with us from the very beginning. And they're, of course, champions of all things AI and responsible AI. And here, a big shout out go to Nadine Letson and Marlene Floyd from Microsoft. Now, please tweet away. We're on all socials. So hashtag IPOS Bracing for Impact and hashtag IPOS Future of AI for Society. And as I like to say, the conversation always continues. And so you'll see some of our students here today and they'll be blogging on this. We'll have blogs going out throughout the next few weeks on our website and we'll also be posting a full recording of uh, today's event. Now, we're especially thrilled uh, to be holding this in person because, of course, I recall uh, very well uh, that before the whole world was uh, locking down, uh, we were about to hold our big conference, our Bracing for Impact, but we actually decided early on uh, to postpone it. So I remember having to put that uh, postponed sign across uh, the conference website. And here we are again. So uh, several years later, and it's so nice to see so many faces joining us and some very distinguished guests who you'll have a chance to meet throughout the day. Uh, we have with us the Honorable Maurizio Bevilacqua, Mayor of the City of Vaughan, uh, so close to home. And we also have uh, distinguished guests flying in from British Columbia. So Justice Marshall Rothstein, recently retired from the Supreme Court of Canada. Flying in from Israel, we have Professor Lior Zemer. He's the Dean of the Harry Radzner Law School in, at Reichman University. Uh, thank you so much for joining us and you'll hear from uh, Professor Zemer in the keynote. Um, so uh, looking forward to that. Uh, we also have uh, a very warm welcome to extend to Costantinos Yorgaras. He is the newly minted CEO of the Canadian Intellectual Property Office. Congratulations. And I believe this will be your first, perhaps among the first official uh, speaking engagements that you make. And delighted to be welcoming back Professor David Waver from the UK. Yay, it's been far too long. Uh, so nice to see you again. And of course, uh, here leading the charge at York University, we have Paul Saparis. He is the chair of the Board of Governors of York University, and he'll be extending some welcoming remarks very shortly. Now, a big welcome to all of our students, and it really is all about the students. We start and end with the students because they are the ones that give us reason uh, you know, to put all these things together. And for those of you who don't know, it's pretty quiet around the law school today because it's actually reading week. So um, it's a good use of your time for the students who've come uh, to extend their time to really support us through this conference. And uh, a big welcome again to the guests who are here in this room. 
and uh, we look forward to your active participation. Now, for those of you joining us on uh, our YouTube live stream, uh, please do ensure, you know, there's a chat function. You can make comments. We want your feedback. If you have any questions throughout the day, uh, we have our students who are monitoring the chat and we'll be sure that the panels uh, are aware of your feedback. Okay, so uh, keep that in mind. We want to hear from you. Now, IP Osgood is the university's uh, IP flagship program, so it dealing with all things IP and technology, and it's a program, really, uh, my own little, my first baby that I started 14 years ago here at Osgoode Hall Law School. And I'm very proud that throughout the years, we've been able to inject many more diverse voices to the debates in IP and technology here in Canada and around the world. And really, today is uh, really no exception. An event like today, the Bracing for Impact series, we've brought together many global experts, not only from law and policy, but from different domains, so in the sciences, engineering, in health, and other important fields, and crossing many bridges, academia, industry, government, and other expert hubs here in Canada and around the world. So you're in for a treat today, as always. Uh, it's action-packed. And along with so many of us, I think I've learned a lot from COVID. Um, now, throughout my many years of conference organizing, and I've been at this for a long time, and I feel like I'm all, almost always organizing a wedding a year. <laughs> um, and I keep making tweaks along the way because I like to make things optimal. Uh, my husband, who teaches engineers, jokes that I should have been an engineer. So there are some innovations that you will notice in our conference today. And um, the first one, I think, is there's only so much resilience we've built up to our screens. So we've been doing a lot of screen time. And uh, so you'll notice that our panels are crisp. They're one hour uh, long and they're more conversational and all, on, of course, on cutting edge themes. Now, outside of the typical uh, keynote that is uh, you know, germane to the conference topic, what we decided to do is to have a compelling keynote uh, from Professor Lior Zemer that really, is followed by commentary by Justice Rothstein, that is on a vital topic that transcends all disciplines and that is of uh, you know, impact and importance to us all. Now, also another innovation, as Osgood is a leader in experiential learning, uh, this conference is all about that. We're not just gonna be talking about AI and theorizing about it, uh, as many academics, we like to do that, but also rolling up our sleeves, perhaps, and uh, making touch point with Spot. So uh, I am told we are the first law school in Canada to bring in uh, a robot. And why not, right? This conference is all about AI. And so let's show what this is about. So Spot is going to be making a debut appearance uh, here on campus. So we'll be having demonstrations throughout the day. And I look forward for you to engage with Spot. And I'm really grateful to both Boston Dynamics and MFE for coming on board and doing the demonstrations. Now, uh, one thing we've decided to keep is uh, uh, food and drinks. So every conference uh, always should have good food and really grateful to Daniel and Danielle for the food. And also, every good conference should be as accessible as possible. So we've tried to do that through the in-person now and the online streaming which we'll be posting up. And of course, we've had to keep within the, proto the protocols of COVID. So you should feel free uh, to wear a mask if you want. You're not required to do so, but of course, whatever makes you feel comfortable. You're, this is meant to be a safe place of learning and we're meant to have fun together. Now, fittingly, also marking the day, um, we're launching the new center for AI and society uh, for the university, so CASE. So we'll have the VPRI of York University, Dr. Amir Asif, 
uh, making some welcoming remarks later on in the, in the day. And also I'll be joined by the co-director, my co-director, yes, that'll be something else I'll be working on, Professor James Elder. So, and then we close with celebration and drinks. So to honor properly the IP Osgood David Weaver Medal for Excellence in Intellectual Property, we wanted to do something here with everyone because that's another thing that happened with COVID. We were able to give the awards on paper, but not actually in person. And that's no fun, right? Especially for the students who work hard uh, throughout their um, you know, time here at Osgood. So and I'm looking at some of our stellar students. So that's coming up. And we'll hear again from Justice Rothstein on that note. Now, to put an event of this magnitude together, we need top speakers, and there are many here. We need the robots, the food. We have uh, lots of help. And here, it's important to say thank you. And first and foremost, Ashley Moniz. Uh, Ashley, he's the Assistant Director of IP Osgood and the IP Innovation Clinic. And he's really been the go-to on all the logistics round the clock and truly exuded superhuman AI qualities. So I think you'll have a very good sleep tonight. Um, so thank you, Ashley. At Osgood, I'm also grateful to Mia Yu, who's been unrelenting in her support. And she's fairly new on the job, and she's been incredible. Big thanks also to Anita Herman and her team. She is a pro, and I've known her since day one at Osgood. And I know I'm looking at Trevor, uh, you know, we, all, we started together and she's been fantastic with us and her team, Erica Robertson and Megan Carrington. Now my gratitude to Anna Kajor, she's a delight to work with from the ISM project at La Sonde. And as usual, uh, we have the enthusiastic crop of students and I'll just name them because they are gonna be blogging and they've been volunteering and we're here very early today putting this all together. So Brittany Oates, Claire Wurtzman, Mina Alnajar, Jasmine Yu, Egan Kongoli, Pankuri Malik, and Gregory Hong. Thank you. Uh, I'm also grateful to Maria uh, from Maria Buddha Photography. There you are, Maria. She's going to make us all look good, all right? So you, you need to make sure you smile. She's the official photographer and videographer for today. And uh, looking forward to seeing all your smiling uh, faces also after on our website. Grateful to 1213 for all the promo materials and to York IT, look at that. It looks like an incredible professional studio. Grant McNair, you're amazing. And uh, thank you for everything you do, you and your team with Burnt Iman. And uh, you know, Grant is uh, you know, leading the ship there and making sure everything is gonna run smoothly. So thank you again. Now, this year's Bracing for Impact is titled The Future of AI for Society. And it looks to how AI has the potential to shape key elements of our lives, from our cities, where we live, to our healthcare system that takes care of us, to our educational system where we learn and teach our future leaders, especially here at the law school. Now, I always like to go back to our signature title, which is Bracing for Impact. And uh, Ian and Aviv, I think we really picked well. Um, because for those of you who travel on airplanes, you will be familiar with the instructions on the seat in front of you. The data shows, and yes, it's all about the data, that Bracing for Impact actually works. So it is always prudent to be prepared. While well, we all hope that this transition to the AI future will involve a smooth flight, we should expect some turbulence along the way. And we should train and prepare ourselves if things do go horribly wrong. And that is where we brace for impact. And that is why we have this major motivation to keep running this important series because we need to uh, discuss, prepare, and really be with each other to ensure that we develop and adopt legal, ethical, trusted, and transparent, socially responsible frameworks to better the future of AI for society. So now, before we kickstart the conference, it is my honor to welcome one of our visionaries at the university, navigating us in the right direction, Paul Saparis. 
And Paul, I will say a few words about you, if that's okay. <laughs> so Paul is the chair of the Board of Governors of York University, and we're so blessed to have him. When I asked Paul to say a few words, he immediately accepted. Indeed, he is an avid supporter of our many initiatives at the university, and in fact, personally attends so many of our events, and I'm, I've seen him at countless events. And on this tech front, he is a superstar himself, as he's had a distinguished 30-year runway career marked by progressively senior appointments within the multinational tech company Hewlett Packard, including 12 years as president and CEO of HP Canada and VP at HP America before retiring in 2012. And I have to say, his retirement has been our fortune at the university. Now, Paul was appointed as the chair of the Board of Governors on July 1, 2018. And his appointment is the culmination of two decades of service to York since 1998, when he was invited to join the Schulich School of Business Dean's Advisory Board, a role he continues to fill today. In 2012, he joined Schulich as executive in residence, and he continues to serve as a guest lecturer and an advisor to the Master of Business Analytics program. Since his appointment to the Board of Governors in 2010, Paul has served on multiple committees and was proud to serve on the search committee for York's current chancellor and president. And you also chose, chose wisely there. As board chair, a role, he says, is perfectly aligned with my post HP plan to dedicate time to my passion for education. Paul is an ex officio member of all board uh, committees at the university. He also represents the Board of Governors on the York University Development Corporation and the University Senate. Paul also continues to bring his leadership talents to independent school, hospital, and industry boards, as well as the boards of startup technology companies and Inspire an education foundation dedicated to the success of Indigenous youth, and I'd love to hear more about that and work more with you on that. Paul also serves as the chair of the Council of Chairs of Ontario Universities. Paul was honored in 2004 with an alumni award for his contributions to the, school, to the Schulich School of Business. He is also a past recipient of Canada's Top 40 Under 40 and a 2013 recipient of Queen Elizabeth's II Diamond Jubilee Medal, honoring significant achievements and contributions of Canadians. Paul, thank you so much for joining us. The floor is yours. So, Pina, thank you for that uh, gracious and unnecessarily long uh, background. You folks are all uh, wonderful. You can read about these things, but thank you for so being so gracious. And it, it is uh, just so delightful to be with you uh, this morning. And uh, when Pina had asked me about joining this conference, it's just one of these things that was so easy to say yes to, especially after 30 plus years in the technology business. And uh, I guess in official capacity as well, to, uh, to say a few welcoming words on behalf of the university. And as uh, Pina has indicated my name and my responsibilities, but I think what I'm most excited about, a little tagline we're using at York University these days about right the future. And if you think of the power of those words in terms of right the future and what it means, um, I think it really represents what this conference is all about in the multi interdisciplinary perspectives that we need to look at at complex issues that are facing society today. And so uh, as Pina eloquently talked about the uh, Bracing for Impact conference, this is indeed our third. Um, but before we do that, we have a very important tradition here and, and as many parts across the country in terms of our land acknowledgement. So I did want to take this opportunity to recognize the many Indigenous nations that have long-standing relationships with the territory upon which York University's campuses, and we say that quite intentionally, it's plural because we do have many, uh, not only in the GTA here, but also in uh, Costa Rica and India and places around the world. And so uh, in this particular campus, we want to acknowledge the territory of many Indigenous nations, 
The area known as Takaranto has been caretaken by the Anishinaabe Nation, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat, and it's now home to many First Nations, Inuit and Métis communities. We acknowledge the current treaty holders, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. This territory is subject to the Dish with One Spoon Wampon Belt Covenant, an agreement to peaceably share and care for the Great Lakes region. Now, for those of you that are joining us virtually from other parts of Ontario, Canada, and indeed around the world, this land acknowledgement may not be for the territory you're currently on. And if this is the case, we ask that you embrace this opportunity to acknowledge the traditional territory that you're currently on and the current treaty holders. So I think you've seen uh, our leader in action in terms of the uh, founder and director of IP Osgood, uh, Pina D'Agostino. And uh, I guess uh, one of the things I wanted to share with you, I knew Pina before I actually had, although I've had a long-standing relationship with the university, it was actually from an industry perspective that I first crossed paths with Pina and her work in, uh, in, uh, in IP and certainly spending a career in technology. You can't help but be abreast of these issues and on top of these issues that are out there. So, uh, and so uh, certainly a lot of her uh, accolades have been quite, uh, she's certainly one of the most prominent leaders in terms of AI uh, here in Canada. And it was recently, I'm gonna put this little plug in, was named one of the top 25 most influential lawyers in Canada. And uh, so we should give that recognition to her. She did not ask me to say that, by the way, so I felt compelled to do so because I think it was important to have that recognition. And I think this uh, Bracing for Impact series that she talked about talks about, you know, really stirring a discussion around AI, both in Canada and, and abroad, and bringing important, many important partners like uh, the conference lead sponsor, Microsoft, which has been with, uh, with this organization since the very beginning. And certainly being on that side of the equation, certainly the importance of sponsorships uh, from the private sector to help make this conference free, to help be able to have accessibility for students is so critical. So we thank all of the sponsors that uh, helped make that happen. And uh, certainly I've been on the other side of that, writing those checks in my days. And so I'm happy to see the sponsors do that uh, today. Uh, so as uh, Pina was talking about, Bracing for Impact has addressed key policy concerns related to AI, such legal, and ethical issues, data governance and intellectual property, and in doing so has brought together experts from across Canada and around the world, both in person and online, and throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, this year's conference focuses aptly on the importance of AI for society. And when York University developed its strategic research plan, and as uh, Pina indicated, uh, Amir Asif, you're gonna be hearing a lot more of that uh, later on in the session, we identified the integration of artificial intelligence into society as a key research opportunity. And today this has emerged as one of York University's central areas of focus and is demonstrated through the creation of York University's newly created Center for AI and Society. And you'll be hearing from York University's uh, Vice President of Research and Innovation, Amir Asif, and, you know, and two of the co-directors, Pina, as you heard about, and James Elder. Now, for those of you, uh, these are actually chronicled in uh, York University's Wi-Fi file. For those of you that are wanting to know all the current news that's happening with York University, both Pina's recognition as well as the organized research units are highlighted in Wi-Fi this morning. So fast breaking news is here. Uh, last year, the, uh, the York University's task force identified the integration of AI into society as the key area of opportunity for accelerated research, bringing together the worlds of AI and society, the needs from collaboration from experts across varying disciplines, devising solutions not only to push technological boundaries, but also protect and assist our community and world more broadly. York University has aimed to empower students through interdisciplinary research and academic opportunities making it a perfect home to advance the capabilities of AI technology, a special consideration for the impacts on all aspects of society. And I can tell you in this privileged position of leading the board, I have the opportunity to step in 
and see some of the excellence in all the faculties across the universities. And I say it's a privileged position because you get these wonderful insights and you're going to see them displayed this morning. So as AI con concerns continue to grow, York University aims to lead the AI technical logical advancement and better understand the ways in which society can adapt to better interact with it. Programs like Bracing for Impact series will help push the university towards that goal and York's interdisciplinary approach is clearly demonstrated with members of four different York faculty speaking with you today. Now, as someone who has been part of the technology industry and continue to be uh, for the past 30 years, I have a real passion for innovation and education. And so me being part of this event is, is quite frankly a bit of a natural and a comfortable place for me. So I thought I'd provide you with some perspectives and they're going to be quick, I can assure you. Despite the challenges of biased algorithms, security, privacy, rampant social media where everyone has a megaphone, I remain incredibly optimistic that the important technological, social, and where appropriate regulatory frameworks will continue to be put in place to address these issues. As they've been in the past with all the other waves of technical, technological innovations that I've witnessed over the past 30 years, and I can tell you I have witnessed them. And at every major technological innovations, the same set of questions get answers and the same set of challenges are progressed and we find our way forward. And I think as it relates to AI, we'll continue to find our way forward. But how, how do we move forward? And I guess in my view, an ethical framework based on the emerging uh, ESG principles uh, can help guide both the private and the public sector in the right direction. We need to be cognizant of the risks. However, we need to be careful not to sacrifice the speed and time to value for business and society that these technologies provide. And we also want to continue to support the vibrant AI ecosystem that's in Toronto, the GTA in Canada, and in fact, around the world where companies are utilizing these technologies to create and improve businesses, improve governments and governments functioning, and society writ large. So these are indeed some very heady challenges and that's why we are gathered here today to better understand the diverse perspectives necessary to provide insights and solutions. So I wish you all a fascinating and productive day of learning. I applaud Pina and the IP Osgood team for setting the stage for this wonderful discussion. Thank you very much.